Welcome to the Art of Love podcast. My name is Tamar Gale, and I am here to guide you into deeper, more expansive love, freedom, and pleasure. A deep inner journey of self-discovery. Here, I will cover all types of topics pertaining to love, including self-love and self-care, relationships, tantra, intimacy, sex, all the way to Christ consciousness, and Pashamama, just to name a few broad topics. My mission is to support you in being true to yourself, reconnecting the fragmented pieces and aspects of yourself so that you can find and use your own inner fire, Shakti power, and voice. It is time to break down the old systems that we have been taught to live by. I would love to see you align with your personal truth and nature instead of succumbing to others' views of how you should be trying to fit inside of the box in order to be accepted, and instead, standing in your power and loving all that you are, accessing a new way of being in the world. Welcome to The Art of Love, and today I'm with Lana Wedmore, owner of Luna Lodge and founder of the White Hawk Foundation. Um, I'm really excited to talk to Lana because we just finished our Embodied Woman Retreat here in Costa Rica, and we had an amazing time with some beautiful women. And um, we just wanted to jump on and, and share this conversation about self-love and the, the work that, you know, Lana's doing in the world. Um, so, Lana, thank you for joining me and um, share a little bit about yourself and your journey. Yes. Hello. My name is Lana um, and I'm a Colorado girl, but I've been living in Costa Rica on for 38 years and here on the Peninsula Osa for 28 and I fell in love with nature as a child. I've always been living in Colorado. I was always outside. But here, where I live is literally, I have 360 degrees of nature all around me. And I just know that nature just helps you fall in love with yourself and then with others and then with the Pachamama, with Mother Earth. And um, it's just so important, I think, right now for all of us to go inside and really fall in love with ourselves again mm. and look for that love because that's the only way that we're going to heal Mother Earth. It all starts within. And nature brings you back to yourself quicker than anything. And I think that's also really important right now in this lifetime is that so many people are living in the future or in the past. And when we come back to the moment and we take time to be with ourselves, it's just so important. Meditation is so important, but people are just, they're, they're not listening either. The best way to make love is by listening. <laughs> but it's just incredible right now for this um, this whole retreat we had with the women. We just had the most amazing time just talking. And you know, that's another thing I think is really important is being honest with yourself about how you feel and your actions. And if everyone would be honest with their self and then with others, we would have a better world. And so I think I'm also now um, a forest bathing um, certified guide and you go out into the forest, and just by walking through the forest, you can see that it calms you down. It's been, you know, you can be even scientifically proven that it slows your, you know, you down, and you can have a blood test. But it's just so important for all of us, I think, to go into nature, because, and and also to protect the nature that we have at this moment. That's what I'm working mm -hmm. on right now here mm -hmm. with the White Hawk Foundation. I'm trying to protect the the Peninsula Osa, because, you know, you can have a place where there's animals, it's called a zoo, or you can come to a place like this, the Peninsula Osa, and there's so many animals, and you can feel the energy. You felt it yeah, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we did forest bathing, um, what, the first day? Yeah, the first day. Of our retreat, and that was my first experience with it. And being here in the jungles of Costa Rica and experiencing the, the nature, just the, for me, the nature here is very feminine in itself, um, very nurturing, very holding, um, you, you feel protected here. You feel safe, safe and able feel safe. to just surrender. And um, to be able to go out in nature and see the monkeys and feel the, the energy of the trees and the plants and just really sink into that, like that was incredible. And I know every woman that was here really just dropped in immediately, felt grounded, and just it just changed, it changed the whole thing. It did. Yeah. Yeah, because by, by us doing, we did that the first thing, you know, and not only that, like she said, you know, the forest is the therapist and it's so true, you know, whatever you need and what, how you started, uh, how you start out is you, you awaken your senses, you know, you're listening, you're looking, you're feeling, 
And so at first you just totally ground in mm. and it's so important. And then you, you do invitations. And so I invited them to do several things walking through the rainforest. And it's just you start walking slowly and then you just become aware mm. and you're just looking around and, you know, you're all of a sudden you start seeing all the plants start to move. It's like they're saying hello, <laughs> you know, and you yeah. can truly feel it because we are all connected. You know, we are part of Mother Earth mm. and we're part of the universe. And that's why I think it's so important right now to help the people understand that when we hurt ourselves, yeah. we're hurting Mother Earth. Yes. And when we hurt Mother Earth, we're hurting ourselves. Mm -hmm. And everything is an, a mirror. You know, just when people speak bad to other people, it's just like a boomerang effect. You know, what's really happening is it's all inside. You know, just like the four agreements, you know, don't take anything personally. When someone does something to you, it's really they're doing it to themselves. You yeah. know, you're just the one that's there. So it's really, really important. But when you're out in nature, how like we were and how we are right now, look at this view. We're sitting here mm. on my house looking out at one of the most amazing views of the tropical rainforest here. I wish everyone could see what I'm looking at right now. Yeah. <laughs> this place, yeah, uh, here at Lana's, at Lana's house, it's just amazing. And I can only imagine waking up to this view every morning. I mean, I have been. It's <laughs> been a little bit of a different view, but I have been waking up to this um, the energy of the rainforest and just this view every day and just to walk out Brighton, you know, I wake well, you wake up with the sun, like you live with, and also because of all the sounds, yeah, the howler monkeys and all the birds, because you know all the animals they just wake up with the sun. Oh yeah, yeah. So you wake up with them, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Like I, I love waking up here at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, like I'm really happy, and then you go to bed at like nine. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, just to w wake up and see the sunrise over the rainforest, and you know, I, I play my my lyre or you know some of my music. And um, it's, I meditate, and it's just. I wish I wish that everyone had the opportunity to feel something like this, mm -hmm. to feel the love that nature just radiates and, and vibrates back to you, and the peace. And I know that we were talking earlier today about how um, nature, when when someone comes into nature, they can see the reflection of their, their own beauty within them, you know? Because when you're in a city and when you're in the corporate world and you're constantly inside and um, in, a con in concrete, you know, you don't have mm -hmm. that connection to nature, your your feelings is, is not quite the same. It's more like it's anxiety, it's stress. And fear. In fear. Yeah. And when you can come here and just drop in and, and see and experience the energy of the nature... Then you actually see the beauty, and, and it doesn't take long to um, to have that reflected back to you, yeah. and to be able to see your own divine beauty. And everything is energy, you know. Everything. And so, just like we were talking this morning, when you tap into that energy, mm. it just like totally changes. And that's why it is so important, you know. And that's why I really stress, you know. I can honestly tell you that like ninety nine percent of all the people have come to my lodge here in Costa Rica, Luna Lodge. I've said, Lana, I don't want to leave. I yeah. will be back. And yeah. right now we just had a uh, honey, we had a couple from um, from England and they were here for two weeks. They even extended their stay and I was having dinner with them the night before and um, the wife looked at her husband and she said, Mark, you can stay if you want. And he said, really? <laughs> I mean, it's just seriously, I mean, it's just like it grows on you. Yeah. And it honestly, when you look at this view, right now we're looking at a view, you guys, that is like, Mother Earth at her prime. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like some people come to my house and they just start to cry, mm -hmm. you know, because their emotions just build mm -hmm. up. But it's it's just so important, you know, to just slow down, you know. And then another thing that's really important that I want to say is your health. You know, just it's so important, you guys, to drink water, to have enough sleep. They say if you do not get more than six hours of sleep a night, it's like for your body, it's like you're a drunk. Mm -hmm. But in communication, you know, being honest with yourself taking time every day to have at least 10 minutes all by yourself yeah. without your phone, you know, and if you can, if there's any way that you can go outside and, and even, you know what, look up at the sun, just look up at the sun and just say to the sun, what are you seeing in me? You know, or look up to the moon, mm -hmm. you know, the universe is out there mm -hmm. and we are part of the universe and the stars, you know, and, and like, look at the moon and Look at all the cycles that it's also going through. Every day you can see it, except for one day mm -hmm. when it's the dark moon. <laughs> and so it's just so important to take advantage or take the time to be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah. 
and get off your phone, you yeah. know, get off your computer and just take a breath in, you know, just breathe in, which is life, and then breathe out. And that's truly relaxation. You know, you can even do that in your car, even if you're in a traffic jam, just a big breath in and then a big breath out. It's better if you can go outside, even if you have to take your dog for a walk, you know, yeah. in a park oh, yeah. or, or in a marina or wherever you are, you know, anywhere you are in the world. It's just, please take time for yourself. It's and just it can so change important. your mood just like that. Oh, totally. It instantly. And so many people have insomnia, you know, now, and it's just because they, you know, everything is in your mind. You know, your mind follows the habits of your breath in the body. Mm -hmm. So if we can learn how to control our breath, we can learn how to control our mind. Yeah. But when you sleep, you can put the landa on your pillow or on your hands and smell it. You know, a mudra is just, you know, guayan mudra, you know, guayan mudra, just your putting your pointer finger with your thumb, you know, just breathe. It's just truly so important to stop your mind. Yeah, so you, showed a, you showed a great one the other day to de-stress, and that was tap, like pressing your thumb to each finger, um, like the pointer finger, ring, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, like just mm -hmm. going back and, and tapping each finger with your thumb. And that, that really is a stress reliever. You know, it is. And something really easy that people can do. Yeah, and it makes you so much more aware, and it also you know, balances your left and right brain and, so, and your hemisphere. You know? So it's, it's so important. Yeah, and it's so simple. Just like I said, just go across your thumb, just right across mm -hmm. all four fingers like this. And I'm not saying it makes you smarter, but it definitely makes you more aware. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. I was telling you, my grandma used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. She used to sit in her chair and... And, and my great aunt. Move yeah. all over. Yeah. <laughs> touch yeah. all over. And I always noticed that because it was, it was you know, something different, you mm -hmm. know, that yeah. and it makes sense now. And mm -hmm. I don't know that she knew what she was doing, but it, obviously she felt, she felt that mm -hmm. balance yeah. by doing that. And mm -hmm. I just want to say to all the people out there that, um, you know, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter who you are... You know, your health is truly the most important thing. And I just had a session yesterday of shamanic Reiki with a woman for like two and a half hours. And, you know, she's a little bit older and she has insomnia and she has anxiety and fear. And I said, you know, listen to your intuition. Just go mm -hmm. back and don't be afraid of listening to your intuition. Yeah. You know, some people I've helped right now, and, and I've said that because it's like they have so much grief and so, so much anxiety and they want to grieve. But I can see that their soul just wants to leap out, mm. you know. And, and once we can connect with our soul and our intuition, then we can really truly remember, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. who we are and yeah. what we're really doing here and our purpose. And I think that's really important, too, is to have goals and a purpose in your life, you know. But if you listen to your intuition, it will tell you where to go. And if you can drop that ego and connect and be creative, you can connect to universal mind. And then you can truly have anything you want. Yeah. And the power of joy, you know, and that's another thing with her. She was so sad. And I was doing Reiki to her, and I just was giving her so much love. And and when we when we finished, she just she just you know came to, and and we were sitting here talking afterwards. And she just said, "Then I just want to smile." And I and I said, "Yeah, and bring laughter back into your life, yeah. because if you don't have it, you know, then you cannot make any other people happy. And it's impossible to have peace outside if you don't have it within. Yeah. So everything starts within. Yeah, yeah, it does. And uh, yeah, and if you're not peaceful within then it doesn't matter where you move exactly it will gonna, chase you. it's gonna chase you so it's important to find those um i call them little rituals but those things that you can do during the day to to come back to that place of of balance and peace just you know, breathe, no matter where you are you know the like, simplest thing is to breathe yeah. like i just said breathing in and breathe out or even if you're in your office or you have time just to go outside and breathe mm. the fresh air it's happened like nature. i said look up to the yeah. sun and, and just look up and say, wow, you know, look at the sun and, and think truly, what is he thinking of me? Mm. What does he truly see? Or the moon or yeah. the stars. You know, just go outside because nature is such a healer. Yeah. Nature is truly the it best is. medicine. It is. And, and breath. Mm -hmm. Breath is key. And your life. breath is your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> of course. If you're and not people, breathing, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, seriously, right now in life, I think I see that people are just, they have so much anxiety and they're they breathing do. from their chest. So it's yeah. like... <laughs> I mean, we had another, a guy the other day at one of the retreats and he came and he was just like, <sighs> and I was like, whoa, you know, and after yeah. seven days, he also ended up staying longer. You know, he was truly breathing from his core yeah. and we just like totally brought him down mm. and grounded him yeah. and, and took him to do forest bathing. And, and you, you can know. tell when, when you're in your head, when you're more in your head, you're breathing from your chest. Oh yeah. You tap into your body. Yeah. Then it's, you know, you're breathing from your body. You're breathing from your abdomen. Yeah, another thing I just want to say, you guys or everyone, is also you're your own best doctor. 
You know, I mean, we know yeah. if something's wrong. Yeah. If all of a sudden, you know, if you feel bloated or you just eaten too much, or you drank too much, you haven't got enough <laughs> sleep. Just really, you know, just, just maybe you have a journal and just say, wait a minute. I need to stop this. I need to stop this. I need to add this into my life. Mm. You know, just those little things, mm. 10 minutes of your life to just stop and meditate and just breathe mm-hmm. would just help yeah. everyone in their life. And if we could have more people that meditated and to have more peace inside of themselves, we'd have a more peaceful world. Yeah. Yeah. So listen to your bodies because your body will always tell you what's going on. And you know, it's it always really gives you signs. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, your mind is just so busy right now, but Sometimes we just have try and help our mind control us so much. But mm-hmm. sometimes if you're just too into your head, you will physically get hurt because, yeah. you're, because you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. Your body has to go, wake up. Yeah. And it's happened to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's truly really happened to everyone. You know, it's like, hey, you're not listening. Yeah. Or you, you get know? sick or you fall down and you break something. Or, you know, somebody was telling me they got into a bad motorcycle accident. I mean, didn't they didn't. It, they weren't going very fast, thank goodness. But... They were just going so fast in their life that they weren't stopping. And it took this motorcycle accident, which, thank goodness, you know, like they weren't going very fast and they were close to home, but they got seriously hurt and it put them out for months. And they said that that was how they realized that they had to stop, Yeah, that they were doing too much. And it took that mm-hmm. to stop them. And it's, it's, it happens all the time. That we don't listen, and it just comes to a place where our bodies and our, our souls, like, no, yeah, no, you're gonna you're gonna listen. No, yeah, I know. And you know, like when I was building the lodge, I broke my leg in four places, my nose in two. I just saw my face. The next day, the government couldn't close me down. And the next day, I ran, I knew I ran out of money. I was in the dark, 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 dark hole. But I think truly, sometimes when you're in that darkness, yeah, you know, that's the only way that you can come out to the light. Yeah, it's the only yeah, way for sure. You have to feel that, yeah. and that's another thing. Just feeling, you know, you guys don't think so much from the head. Feel. That's you should try it one day. Don't think about anything. Just feel. Like wherever you go, mm-hmm. feel it. Mm-hmm. Open your heart. Mm-hmm. You know? Ianger said, just stand up and open up your shoulders and bring them back and you'll never be depressed another day in your life. Yeah. So try that one day. Just take a big breath in, big breath out, meditate a little bit, and then the whole day just move from your heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. And how amazing would the world be if we all moved from our heart? Yeah. It would mm. be totally different. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally different. Yeah. yeah. Feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feeling instead of, yeah. Be aware of your senses. And, and like here, it's so amazing because um, we did forest bathing and then I showed them the Animal Speaks book. And here it's so incredible because so many animals, you know, they cross your path. And every single animal or any, you know, is, is a signal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a sign. Oh, yeah. You know, of what you, what's really going on in your life. It tells you to slow down or, you know, to pay attention, you know, just to listen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What have I seen here that's been really present? Well, one of the girls had a hummingbird. Well, Actually, a hummingbird, hummingbird just flew yeah. in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the hummingbird was like um, enjoying the nectar of life. Yeah. Was that what it, it is? Mm-hmm. Enjoying yeah. the nectar of life. And sharing that, yeah. you know, because they go around and they touch all these flowers and give their love to them. Mm-hmm. And so then you're sharing all that love because mm-hmm. then all those flowers can blossom. Yeah. So it's just love all around. Yeah. You know, and they do the impossible and they can move any direction. So it's also telling you that, that you truly can do the impossible. Yeah. You can do anything you want in life. You know, if you visualize it, just yeah. paint your picture, you know, paint whatever you want, mm. but always think positive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just so important. Yeah. So that's the hummingbird telling yeah. us too. And to dance, dance, you know, dance. Yes. And then we had an armadillo. Yeah. An armadillo. That was the first day. And the armadillo was all about setting boundaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had yeah. to search that one. I, I didn't actually know what that one was. And a grasshopper says, you know, grasshoppers, uh. they only go up and forward in life. They never go back. Hmm. And they have sensors on their legs. And that's really just telling them when they move, if there's a predator or not. So it's really telling you to listen to your intuition. And it's so important. Yeah. The day in my office, there was like 50 on the top of the roof. And (laughs) my guide, who is incredible, he's incredible with insects, he walks and he's like, Lana, what's going on? I was like, oh, those are for me. You know, because it was telling me in my life, because I was maybe going to go back with one of my ex-boyfriends. It's like, no, you know, just go up and forward. and Don't go back and listen to your intuition. And you can tell, you guys, if you truly listen to your intuition, it's like it will truly tell you what you Mm -hmm. need to do in this life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people are afraid of it, but don't be afraid, because if you listen to your soul, or if you follow, if you follow your, um, if you're listening to your soul, then you're following your intuition. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I had, um, what, what would it mean if I had two grasshoppers mating on the top of my bathroom? Mm-hmm. I think that's a really good sign. <laughs> because they found each other. They didn't find each they other, did, yeah. They didn't go back, but now they're connected. Ah, and they're truly listening to their intuition. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's following your intuition, you're listening to your soul, and you'll have a better day. That's yeah. my new quote. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Can you say it again? Let them. If you follow your intuition, you're listening to your soul, and you'll have a better day. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, what got you into this work? Like, what brought you into like, yeah, your what is your journey and of how you got here of wanting to create this? I think that might be um, a great place to go. Like, what brought you to the place of wanting to create this for people? Like you had a dream. I had a dream, yeah. And um, I had a dream, and now it's reality. And um, it was a hard journey, but it was truly my dream. I, I traveled around the world for two years, and I lived in Australia and worked at Cape York, the most northerly point. That's where I did my first business plan. I was teaching sailing, but I ended up doing everything. I mean, I cooked, I cleaned, I was a waitress. So I did my first business plan there, but I had already been here to Costa Rica. And so then when I traveled around the world, I went back. I still wanted to come back to here to Costa Rica. And then I ended up like driving through Central America with 16 people. To, mm. I was supposed to be married to an, an Alaskan fisherman, but it was just my intuition was just telling me, no, go south, go south. So I just started telling all my friends, you know, I'm going to drive through Central America. So we started meeting at this bar every Wednesday night. And then we ended up 16 of us, nine men and seven women. And we literally, I had, we have five surfboards, four kayaks, two rafts and two bicycles and three cars. And my, I was in a 72 um, Volkswagen bus. <laughs> and what a trip. I called it chili pepper because it was red and white, had polka dotted curtains and black white checkered floor <laughs> and had the grateful dead bears on the back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and we just, we just surfed and kayaked and just partied all the way through Central America. We took a month. So I was moving here for good. All my friends were just going for the trip. But then, you know, so I started working in tourism mm-hmm. here in Costa Rica. But I had already worked in tourism before that as a guide. Or I worked as first in sales and then as a guide. So I got to travel all around Costa Rica and I just learned so much. And then I had seen a photo of Corcoel and I told my boss, I have to go see where, where mm-hmm. this is. Because this photo was beautiful ocean coming down and it was just like, and then it went into the rainforest. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it just came down the, the ocean. And so then... I just got to come to here to Corcoel, and that's what made me, I just fell in love with this place, mainly because of the nature. And so I was a guide and then assistant manager, the manager of a hotel. And then I was looking for some piece of property. I was working down there for like nine years, but I was looking for a piece of property to, um, to have my hotel. And I was going to buy some property in the beach, but it didn't work. And then one of my employees said, Lena, um, I have a place up into the, in the rainforest. And so we walked up here. And it was incredible. I just, I, we went up to the primary rainforest and I just felt it and I just knew. And I truly said to myself, I need to build something to share because of what I felt here, really, Tamar. It was, I just felt it was so incredible and I knew I had to build this. And so, you know, a year into the project, you know, I broke my leg and everything. And then everyone thought I was crazy and it took eight months for us. You know, then I got a loan from the bank here and you know, they wanted me to get a loan for 32% in colones. And I said, no, I want a dollar loan. Seven years, first year grace period, 9.75%, because that's what it was in 1999 in the United States. And so they, I invented the loan. I invented it in dollars. And they, they didn't get back to me for like two months. So then we got started up again, because I was like about a year into the project is when everything happened. And so I started up again. You know, we opened year 2000 with with three bungalows and then little by little by little. But through the whole process, you know, I know now that it was truly just listening to my intuition. Because yeah. then mm-hmm. a year in the project and my house burned down, I lost everything. And that day I said to my boyfriend, where there was fire, there's going to be water. And I know that that house burned down because it didn't really go with me mm. anymore. You know, and I just from that, especially from that time, I just knew that no matter what happens, there has to be something positive that comes out no matter what happens in mm. your life. There is truly a you know, a message for you. And so then you just start up again, you know, you just like lift back up and start thinking positive. And, and I think having a purpose in life is so important. And, um, actually I just heard that if you write down your goals, only 4% of the people in the world write down their goals Mm -hmm. and only 1% write them out and then reread them. Mm -hmm. And that's for success. If you do that, you know, and and visualizing. That's important for everybody to, uh, to hear that because that's really, 
when you told me this, like last week, yeah, Mm -hmm. just last week. And I'm, I'm, I can understand the, the reasons behind that, you know, when we write down our goals and we're, we're read them every day, then it's constantly within us. And of course we can't do nothing but create it. Yeah. And just like I said, just paint your picture. I mean, close your eyes and just think positive. And because everything you see in your mind and then you say is happens. It's in your conscious mind, good or bad. I mean, seriously, whatever you think and whatever you say happens. So you better think positive and then just close your eyes and just paint your picture. Just paint it, whatever you want, visualize it and see that. And then it will happen. Yeah. Just put it out there, Yeah, you know? And like, if you have a business, say, I have a wonderful business in a wonderful way. I give wonderful service and I receive wonderful pay. Mm-hmm. Say that every day, you know? I mean, it's it's incredible, you know, how much positive affirmation can truly, you can be truly successful. Say it again, I'm going to repeat it. Okay, I have a wonderful business in a wonderful way. I have a wonderful business in a wonderful way. And I give wonderful service and receive wonderful pay. And I give wonderful service and receive wonderful pay. Mm-hmm. You have to add that pay on, yeah. you know, because oh, yeah. you you can put it out there and you can have that business, but you have to do it all, that whole sentence, because it has to. You have to complete that, you know, truly what you truly want. This is going on my mirror at home. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and also, it, so it can't come you know, off. You can also say, "I cast the burden mm. to the to, to the, the Christ, Christ within." within. And, and I I'm go free. free. And I'm free. Mm-hmm. free. To cast the burden to the Christ within, and I go free. Because, you know, we were born in a natural state. Mm-hmm. Well, we yeah. talked about that before. Yeah. It's pretty much when you're in the egg. Yeah. You know, when your real true soul is there. So it's, um, and that's the true natural state. And that's how we truly are. We are positive. Yeah. We are positive. Mm-hmm. It's just now, as men and women, that we put all these things in our mind. You know? And that we've had since gestation, since we've been in the wombs of our mother. Like, we've, it's been piled up on us, the wounds, the pain, the, you know. So we have a lot of stuff to uncover. Yeah. Yeah. But if you go back to that natural state and that peaceful state, yes. you know. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah, I truly believe that we can get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you could just see where we are that you would <laughs> maybe you can show them a picture yeah i would love to I'd <laughs> i have an amazing it. picture of this i yeah. would love to yeah maybe mm-hmm. maybe i can i can uh yeah put one on there with you do you mm-hmm. have one here on the back with this in the background yeah i do perfect mm-hmm. yeah perfect mm-hmm. yeah this yeah well just want to thank you all yeah. you know for listening and because they say that's the best way to make love is by listening. And that's really <laughs> that's that's so tr- true. The yeah. intimacy. Yeah. It it's, takes presence and listening. Oh, wow. We're just watching a hawk, you guys. Yeah. I just had a hawk just have two babies. I literally saw the baby come out of the shell and the mommy take the eggshell out of the nest. They were born on February 25th at 11 a.m. And I just watched them. And right now in our retreat, mm-hmm. we all married ourselves. And that same day, I watched the babies fly. I mean, <laughs> literally fly. I watched them for yeah. a month. The mommy feed them every day and everything. But I literally watched the two babies fly. Well, we watched them mm-hmm. here. We were in a in we were in a little meeting here, in a little course. And that day, we watched the babies fly. I mean, to take flight. And that's what, you know, I'm working as a shamanic Reiki right now. And that's why I just see so many people. They are just, their soul just wants to fly. Yeah. Just let it go. It's just so important to let things go. Yeah. You don't have to attach, be attached to anything anymore. Just let it go. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a great um, way to put it. I'm just thinking of like the date. So if the 28th is when we did it. That's yeah. a 10, which is a 1. So it's new beginnings. All of us, we kind of honored ourselves and made vows to ourselves to love and honor, you know, who we are mm-hmm. as, as souls, as women on this, on this earth and our path. Um, and then the, the birds take flight. Yeah. Like, that's nature at its finest. I mean, those are oh. spirits, like, Can you imagine how afraid they were? signs. To yeah. take their first flight. I mean, it was so amazing for me today. You know, also when I just got the amazing card today. Mm. It was about flight, remember? And freedom, yeah, yes. you know? I also want to say right now, to let go is to receive. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are holding on to so many things right now. And I, I just love that quote. Let go to receive. Yeah. You know, because I just did break you to another man and he was like, Lana, just tell me, you know, tell me what the divine is saying. You know, I just need you to tell me what to do. And as I was doing break to him, I was just like love. And it's like, we are all truly the mm-hmm. divine. We truly have everything we mm-hmm. need to know inside of us. Mm-hmm. It's just, we don't pay attention anymore. Yeah. It's truly all within us. 
Yes. Everything is. Yeah. We have the divine within us. We mm-hmm. are part of the divine. We're part of the universe. We are. You know? So we just all need to know that. We yeah. need to remember. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody the other day about that, actually, that just what you said, because um, they were talking about seeing the divine, you know, like really seeing God. And I said, well, you know, first of all, for me, in my, in my, from my own experience, you can't see the divine in someone else until you can see it in yourself. So until you, and you can't see it in yourself until you can, you know, like love who you are. Yeah, understand That self-love it. and mm-hmm. understand that. It's only then that you can see the divine and everything else around you because everything else is a mirror. Yeah, and I think also adding to that is what we talked about this morning is, you know, I said, you know, everything, all anyone wants is love and attention. And yeah. then a friend of ours said, and acceptance, which yes. is so important too. But yes. I think also... What I've just realized now in my life, because I'm also going on my healing journey, is to forgive. But the only mm-hmm. way you can truly forgive is you forgive yourself, mm-hmm. but also to understand. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. the only way that you can oh, forgive yeah. is to understand. Yeah. But it's okay. It's okay to say, I forgive you, or to forgive yourself. Yeah. You know? Oh, we need that. Yeah. And you have to forgive yourself before you can forgive anyone. Yeah. It's all in within. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So just start there. And it's a process, and it's a journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I did a, hoop, a huge process around that a few years ago. Of um, I just sat down, and um, it was in my vision quest, actually, and ceremony with myself. And I forgave myself. I forgave everyone who's crossed my path. And I asked for forgiveness from everyone who who's crossed my path. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went through each person. Like, I really, like, visualized people. And... Um, Amazing what changed after that. I did too, because yeah. I was on a vision quest for six nights and seven days yeah. all by myself here in the rainforest here in my hotel. And it does change everything. Oh my gosh, yeah. When and also, can... if you know, there's mudras too that you can hold yeah. on. You know, this is mercury here, mm-hmm. you know, your baby finger. And and by doing that too, and also you guys, just like what she just said, by giving love to someone else, it's just coming right back to yeah. you. You know, so, and by thinking about, that's so true, forgiving. I did the same thing yeah. when I was out there. Did you? You know, and a true <laughs> goddess is relaxation too. You know, it's just like, so I would do that too. Every time some, something came into my mind, I would just, boom, i just lay down on my yoga mat and just look up at the forest. And then I'm the next, you know, then the next thing I would do is just what you just said. I would think about every single person in my life and forgive them and just, just ask, you know, for love, mm-hmm. you know, for them and mm-hmm. love from me to them. But so also they have love within themselves, yes, you know, yeah. no matter what's going on in their life, you know, and every day you can say to someone, you know, I love you. This really works. It's the whole bano bano. Mm-hmm. It's like I love you. I'm sorry. Please, please forgive, forgive me, me mm-hmm. and thank you. Yeah. Even if the person isn't even in front of you, if you're having something with going on with someone, just put them, visualize them in yeah. front of you. It's so important. Yeah, it is. And to yourself, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As again, we're we're all a mirror. Everything is a mirror for us. So what you're feeling is going to be reflected back to you. And talking about a mirror, mm. if you can look at yourself yeah. every day in the mirror oh, yeah. and say, I love you, or please forgive me, or, you know, that's super powerful. Too. Or even just, yeah, that, and and saying your affirmations in the mirror yeah. as well, because then it's reflected back to you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's super powerful. Mm-hmm. Super powerful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lana. Yeah, thank you so much. your wisdom and for speaking uh, with all of us today about love and this beautiful place you have. And I'll put the links to Luna Lodge um, mm-hmm. below. So okay. definitely check that out. Check out the website. And um, if you get a chance to come to Costa Rica, then you definitely want to come check this out because it's a place that's just full of love. And um, I, every person that's that I know that has come here has just been changed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, because maybe we're surrounded 360 degrees by nature. Yeah. And also my foundation is the White House Foundation, and we're, we're going to do a GoFundMe because we need to um, raise money. We're going to make the first century museum here in Puerto Jimenez, but we're also trying to you know preserve the land here. And we're going to do that on Earth Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Wonderful. I can also give you that link. Um, and because we truly, the only way we're going to be able to, to protect and to heal Mother Earth is to help heal ourselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's the only way. Yeah. So if- We are part of her. Definitely check that out as well, and you'll give me that link. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you all out there for, for listening to us, and um, it's been so nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Lana. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for The Art of Love. 
And I look forward to connecting with you again next Wednesday.